At Radley College, summer term has just begun. On the previous evening, 20 new boys joined the school. They settled into their socials or houses, dined in hall, and were told in chapel by the warden, Dennis Silk, that the main purpose of their five years at Bradley was to acquire the right habits for life. But the new boys have yet to meet their form master, the terror of the fourth, David Goldsmith, known as Goldie. Now come along the lake. Right, everybody here. The first thing you do is to stand up when the dog comes in, I may as well tell you. The first day here, you may as well learn a few manners. Sit down. <clears throat> now, what I think we'll do is to take names and see who's here. <clears throat> is there a boy called Archdale here? Yes, oh, yes. Tell me your initials, will you? Come along, you vile boy. This is your very first period at Radley College, one of England's greatest public schools, and you're late. Sit down. I think a school like Radley, new boys are notoriously well settled in from the word go. And I think um, my approach to new boys is, is, to, is, to, is to make them part of the, the form straight away. Do you think that they might find their first exposure to you a, a, a bit frightening? I think some of them are worn beforehand. Yes, I dare say they are, but a little bit of a fright doesn't do them any harm. They soon know that my bark is worse than my bite. I've never really frightened any Hinton boy, to my knowledge. <laughs> I went all the way up to Sotheby's to buy these chairs for you. Who knows what Sotheby's is? What? Yeah, yes, but they specialise in lovely antique furniture. These are lovely chairs that you're on here. <clears throat> you probably will never sit on anything like this again, and I will not have the legs weakened by hooligans messing around in them. And there are various tilts, which I'll now describe. Stand up if you can't see these tilts, because you've got no excuse not knowing them. I'll just describe what they are. There is the forward tilt, which is like that. That's one penalty of your court. There is the backward tilt, the chap who does that. One penalty if you're caught. There is the sideways tilt, like that. One penalty. There is the diagonal tilt, where you tilt so that you're on one leg only, like that. I can hardly do that. I'm only on one leg. That, I may say, weakens the chair even more. That's two penalties. And the worst thing of the lot is the total collapse. The total <laughs> collapse is where the whole of you and your chair thunder onto the ground. Four penalties. Hands up those boys who are dry bobs. Oh, no! Last year, out of my form of 20, there were 13 dry bobs. Are there only five, six cricketers here? I've never known a form like that in my life. What are you going to do, Levin? I don't know what it means. You play, have you ever played cricket? Um, no, I haven't. Oh, it'd be good for you to learn how to play cricket. Take it back and start up a cricket club in Denmark. Hands up the dry bobs again. Well, let's hear your name so that I can get to know you. You're the only people worth having at all. Pop or well, I know. Please. Yes? Are you a good cricketer? Good boy, being a good dry bob. All dry bobs will get an enormous advantage straight away with me. Yes, what are you? Are you good at cricket? Average. Good boy, yes. Keen cricketer? Uh, yes, sir. Oh, yes. You ever played for England? Yes, sir. Have you been on an MCC tour or anything yes, like that ever? <laughs> Those who are wet bobs, I don't know what they do and I don't care, but they do some vile stuff. It may be organised by your socials or something, but make sure you know what to do. Hands up those boys who know where you go at 1.30 today. Yes, you? Central hour. No, you don't, you vile boy. Not today, yes? I'm chaplain. You go to the chaplain. And surprisingly enough, you go to chapel to meet him. All the windows are given by other people. Uh, some of them uh, are very, very traditional and old-fashioned ones. Really rather nice in their own way. I think the most exciting window in the whole of the chapel is this one. It's the one I sit opposite because it's the only window, I think, with the exception of a tiny one up there in the gallery, which has got nothing in it at all. Now, if all these windows are full of saints and things like that, I think this is the window which is your window. Saints in the making. People like you who have just started here, not being terribly pious or goody-goody, I hope, but being useful and honest and courteous and the things that really matter. 
So I'm rather glad there's no coloured glass in that, because that helps me to think about you and what you might become, and perhaps pray just a little bit harder sometimes for you. Saints in the making. Remember that every time you walk past it and see what happens. When the chaplain is finished with you, he will show you where to go because you go and see the presenter. The presenter is the other word for music master, and he will test your voices to see which of your he likes the sound of and which he doesn't. Right, let's hear what you sound like. <laughs> Okay, right, jolly good. Thank you. You don't like singing? Well, well not like really. Singing. Let's see what you sound like. Oh. Not too bad. Oh. Oh. Getting up there? Can't. You can't? Oh, let's uh, have a lower one. La. Oh, that's almost. La. 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 Getting up there? <laughs> Okay, right, jolly good. Thank you very much. Can you sing? No. <laughs> Heard worse. That's it. <laughs> yes, you haven't got a bad voice, actually. Mm. Well, look, I'll have to see, I and mean, I, I, I would quite like you to sing in the choir if we could fit you in, because you've got quite a reasonable voice. Mm. Therefore, you could contribute a bit. Yes? Mm -hmm. How would you, what would you feel about that? Well, don't mind. You don't mind? Well, that's the right attitude. It's an open mind, anyhow. Mm -hmm. Remember always to be like that when you first come to a place like this, because all sorts of new things happen here. I should expect everybody to be here happy, cheerful, healthy, confident. I don't like to have new boys going shuffling round the place like this. It's frightening and dropping all their books and things, turning up late. I like to see my new boys in the summer term, happy, confident boys going around. Not arrogant, you don't own the place yet, you're all new boys. But I like you to be happy, cheerful, know exactly what you're doing. Knowing you're in the best form, probably in Great Britain, and certainly in Radley. And confident, not letting down the side. Everybody know exactly what's expected of you. Righto, good luck, now you may go. Good day. <coughs> At the threshold of their public school days, a vast range of opportunities is open to these boys. A new world of activities, sporting, technical, intellectual and artistic. Bradley's raison d'etre is not sport or extramural activities. It is academic education. And the new boys will spend a lot of time in the company of this man, David Goldsmith. A man of refinement and unusual skills. One of the minority who can understand real tennis. The ancestor of the game played at Wimbledon. As pupil or teacher, David Goldsmith has always been in education. 
From school he went to Oxford, and from Oxford he went back to school. Hurst Pierpoint first, but for the last 29 years a master at Radley. He's a confirmed dry bob, and was considered for years to be a confirmed bachelor as well. But a few years ago, Goldie astounded his colleagues. He wooed the warden's secretary. She agreed to become Mrs Goldsmith, and now they have two children. But this radical change in his lifestyle didn't alter his teaching style, the roots of which are deep in his own childhood. I think I'd always loved teaching all my childish games. I was an only child, and I used to invent games with all my teddy bears, and I had a mark book with all their names in, and all the marks they got, and produced fortnightly orders, and all that sort of thing. I used to love... That, that was my... my uh, favourite games <laughs> when I was eight or nine. Some people say a man in a condemned cell concentrates the mind beautifully, but I find that the Saturday mentals probably concentrate the mind better. Anything else I've ever heard, it just happens to be what I think. Nothing concentrates the mind better. Right, number one. And the follow-up is right down the for the end. One. Eight. Two. 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 Eight. 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 That's all. It's very simple one. Number two. Subtract four and a half from 800,000. This little tricks which I've developed as I've gone on. I think if you're going on teaching the same stuff year after year, it becomes so much more interesting if you can liven up your classes with a few sort of funny things, which even if they don't amuse the boys, amuse me. <laughs> I think act, I think schoolmastering really is just uh, acting. That's how I look at it. Number 14 coming up now. What's a half times 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 64? Yes. I've always been a great gambler. I love horse racing and I naturally bring in horse racing questions into my, my weekly mental tests. And I expect boys in my math sets to know who's won the derby and who's favorite for this and that race. Number 18, the chief race at that meeting is called the July Cup. What firm sponsors it? It's the something July Cup. Mm -hmm. And number 19, of course, I wish to know how many furlongs the July Cup is run over. Number 20, a question for the keen cricketers here. Which county in the Schweppes County Championship yesterday was out, all out for exactly 240? Australia. Which county made exactly 200? And 40. And number 21, Number 21, which batsman recalled to Middlesex oh, yes. yesterday, opened the innings and made 100 and 37 runs? <laughs> it's the surname I want, if you happen to know the Christian name as well, by all means put it in. Right, number 30, last question. And I'll find numbers right now and the answer to the end. Four, 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 four. Two. Three, four, five, six, eight, and another eight, and another eight, and eleven, and thirteen, and seventeen, one, 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 two, eighteen, and two. Seven, seven, and seven, and seven, and seven, and seven, and seven, and eleven, and thirteen, and one. That's all. Good morning. That's the end of the very famous. Change! As for Ipswich Town Football Club, if Ipswich win away, they get let off their next prep. If Ipswich lose at home, they get a double prep or if they lose any really important match. So therefore, it's quite true to say that if Ipswich have a bad season, my exam results are good because they've done more work. 
Likewise, if Ipswich, as they usually do, have a really good season, then my chaps practically do no work at all and their exam results all suffer. <laughs> this is a code to be cracked. The answer is QPR v Ipswich. It's the next letter. It wouldn't be the last one, I warn you. It's in a code, that, and that is deliberately small. It's very clever indeed, and very topical, I may say. It's a code. This is not an anagram, it's a code. So that's not a sensible answer at all. Goldie is a great believer in rewards and punishments. He calls them bonuses and penalties. They get recorded in his mark book and go to determine the end of term order. So to top the form in Goldie's fourth, it's not enough to be a nimble mathematician. A boy has got to be well versed in cricket, football and the turf. There are several more letters to come there, but it's just the next letter. How? Look at that. Make sure that other people don't look. <laughs> Wrong! <laughs> <laughs> One penal. So do we have to put the letter in code? You've got to put the letter back in code. Oh, well, each one of those All you can do now, once you've been up with the wrong one, is to expunge, yes? What is that letter? I can't read it. You write it out again, then. Oh, right, sir. No, don't you look! Oh, not oh, not me, oh, boy, sir. I was just turning my head away. What, you mean that? Yes, sir. Yes, wrong again. There's two penal <laughs> <laughs> Two penal ties. Sit down at once, you vile boy. And of course it doesn't work out. Here comes another one bringing it up. Yes, come along. Wrong, one panel thing. What's your name, Benson? No, you've got to have it written down, you impertinent boy. Yes? Right. Thank you. That's the finish. No point in coming up anymore. Too easy that, I'm afraid. Too easy. What was it? <laughs> and so the first day passed. As well as the chaplain and the presenter, there was Latin with Dr. Moore and French with Mademoiselle Corinne, the French assistant. And very soon the new boys were looking much the same as the not so new boys. If these new boys at Radley are here to acquire the right habits for life, there is one habit acquired very quickly, the habit of eating between meals. After breakfast, lunch and dinner in the dining hall, and after tucking into plates of tuck in the school tuck shop, at any opportunity, Radleyans will slip away to secluded gas rings for another fry up. And it's at this time that each boy must ask himself an important question. It seems deceptively simple, but it's a very fundamental sorting of the sheep from the goats, and it'll have a profound effect on each boy's enjoyment of the next five years. The question he must ask is this, am I a wet bob or a dry bob? A dry bob spends his time on dry land, playing rugger and hockey in the winter and cricket in the summer. Oh yes, especially for song for you, that one. Dry bobs are people who like to express their individual flair. Wet bobs row. Radley is one mile from the Thames, and people opt to row for the joys of teamwork and moving as one well-oiled machine. Use your, come on, get underneath. What have you achieved there? Come on, think about it, get underneath. Get underneath Both sides, stroke side. You're all on the wrong side. Right out. Future, make sure the riggers are out of the water. Okay. Okay. Keep your oars on the water as you go out. Two, take a stroke when you can. No, three stroke exercises. That's one arms away, two up the slide, and three the stroke. Okay, we'll do that going down stream. One, two, three. Come on, get it right. You've got to concentrate, Tom. Right, get ready. Come on, get into your line. Into your... Keep away. 
One of David Goldsmith's most cherished duties is as coach of the Radley 3rd 11. It was now, after nearly three decades at Radley, that David Goldsmith was beginning to ask himself whether he forever wished to remain a big fish in a small pond, his kingdom, the fourth form, and the third eleven. He applied for the headship of a small independent school called Cokethorpe, and he was appointed Cokethorpe's head. This was to be his last term at Radley, and this was to be the last binge for his all-conquering third eleven. Go on, drown it. Yeah, well, we had it earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, look, this is disgusting. <laughs> Come on, I'm going to take that from you now. Yes, I'm going to take that from you. <laughs> you see if you can walk straight to me. <laughs> You're not going to have ever seen him. It's all right for you. Well, you haven't got to live with him and at that night. He'll be screaming and shouting. <laughs> all your agey great aunts will see. Yes, I really is. It's so nice, darling. <laughs> He's got to stay behind and work yes. hard. And when does he take them again? In September. Oh. Where's she gone? She's gone to Denver, Colorado. Yeah. She's going to sell Time Life books on the telephone. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask everyone to raise their glasses to Jan and Goldie and wish them everything that's good in the future and give them our love? None, absolutely none. No, very, very good I no, no, not one that I have. I shall miss Radley tremendously. I've got an enormous number of very good friends here. I shall miss the things I do here. I shall miss teaching. I intend to do as much teaching as I can at Cokethorpe, but it, I, it'll be very different from the teaching that I've done here. Good Lord. Thank you very much. Some glasses. One. <laughs> Two. Three. Four. Thank you very much. I'm most touched. I shall think of. I shall. <laughs> I shall think of you whenever I clean my teeth. <laughs> I shall miss running the games that I do here. I shall miss the, the general common room life, which I love so much here, community life. Um, it'll be very different. There is a school of thought that thinks that there are no more characters left in schoolmastering. There are no adherents to this view in the Radley Third Eleven or in the fourth form. They have had the privilege of seeing the subwarden at work at close quarters, fielding practice, what I believe is called a mental, a continuous self-inflicted hairdo. Strange noises emanating from him as he comes Boom chewing down covered passage. <laughs> Will Radley, I wonder, ever be the same without DFG? It will not be the same without DFG. David Goldsmith's heart's blood 
has been poured into this place. A great teacher, I know it because I've sat in his class, a remarkable coach who could make very bad players become rather good players. An inflictor of nicknames that stuck, and here are a few of them. FLT1, FM Spiffkins, <laughs> The Grubby Boy, The Bubok, and Sweatham. They will carry these names to the grave. Actor, mimic, punter, or rather student of the turf, singer, lawn tennis king, above all, tutor in the hard times.